Sheikh Hatiri says, what do you think will be the best formation next season? 4-3-3 with Jose Lu as a number nine. 4-3-3 with Fede as a right winger and Rodrigo in the center. Or 4-4-2. Also, if we're going to be so short on right wingers and play Rodrigo on the right, we really should just keep Arribas. Summer is not over, so I don't know what the future holds for Real Madrid in terms of uh, roster construction. To me, it seems like it's a disaster and, and, uh, and nonsense to face next season with the current squad. I think more signings are needed, especially, well, not especially, mainly and and quite possibly the only aspect Real Madrid are going to reinforce is the, the offensive line. I, sh- I do not expect Real Madrid to face the 2023-2024 season without any more attackers. But if this were to be the case, I think Ancelotti will lean towards starting Valverde slash Bellingham on the right and Rodrigo in the center. Uh, maybe he could try a 4-4-2 with, uh, with both Vinicius and Rodrigo attacking. But, you know, Vinicius is probably way more efficient and way more comfortable on the left. So he, he would probably end up uh, using... Ancelotti, I'm talking about. Ancelotti would probably end up using the 4-3-3 with either Valverde or, or Bellingham on the on the right, in my opinion. But again, I do not expect Real Madrid to have this current roster by the end of the summer. Um, I think that's correct, all of it. Uh, we can't really answer this right now because we don't know what the final roster is. But if you wanted to flip the question and say, based on this current roster, as is constructed with no new signings or departures, what would you do? I would lean towards not starting Jose Lu, which seems crazy because he's our only striker. Um, I would go Vinicius, Rodrigo, and Bellingham as your three players, which in some ways is kind of weird because only Vinicius is really playing his best role in that situation. Rodrigo is a makeshift striker. Bellingham is obviously not like a traditional pure right winger, but I think he's going to play a lot in that role because we have so many midfielders. And really the only way to make room for Modric, Cruz, Ceballos, Camavinga, Chu, many, Fede Valverde, Bellingham, not all at the same time, but like just to spread out the minutes is really for Bellingham and, and Fede Valverde to play as an attacking midfielder more and Rodrigo as a striker more. I'm not saying I agree with it or don't agree with it. I'm just saying that that's a very realistic scenario. Um, the reason why I would not have Jose Luz starting is because I don't think it's enough creativity outside the box and in build-up play for Jose Lu to be your starting striker because he's just not Benzema. He can't be. He can't do that. I think Jose Lu is a really good backup to have. I think Jose Lu is fantastic in the air as a situational striker to come in. Uh, maybe in the second half if you need a presence in the box. But I just don't think it's enough creativity if you if you start him and, and that means you, you bench uh, Rodrigo. So that's why I would just go Vinicius, Rodrigo, Bellingham. Um, but, but that's another reason that I think we just really need a, a really good striker to sign a striker. Yeah. Um, and I agree with we should keep Arribas. Also... This is a very, I, I realize, and I think this is me also forgetting about him a lot too, but Brahim Diaz is back. Yeah. He is someone who can play right wing. Um, Definitely. And uh, so just look out for Brahim under the radar. Maybe if he does well, maybe he gets more playing time than we thought. Uh, Sheikh Hatir, no, we just read that one. <laughs> Ranta says, how can Keon be sure that Mbappe will bring trophies and that Mbappe and Vinicius will be unstoppable together when we already have a big sample size of him and Neymar not succeeding, winning the only trophy that matters for PSG, the Champions League? They couldn't even do it with Messi, so what guarantees is there that he will do it at Madrid? Also, I think it's very important for Mbappe to get the number he wants, to play in the position he wants, and to be the big star of the team. We already have a superstar left winger and he may not be as good as Mbappe, but 
he is good enough and he is more of a Maridisa than Mbappe ever will be. I think the club should focus on a real nine and a natural right winger instead of unbalancing the team both on and off the field. You go ahead, Kijin. All right. Um, this is a great question. And here's my answer. He has a point. He has a point. But I think context really matters. The Neymar thing, let's not pretend that Neymar was a superstar that was available to play in the most important games. We all know what happens every Champions League when his sister's birthday rolls around. <laughs> all of a sudden, he gets injured and whatever. And one of the years where Neymar was healthy, and there, they got to the Champions League final. Their midfield and overall team is also not nearly as good as... Like, you talk about PSG's weaknesses in midfield over the years. We have no such weaknesses in our midfield. We have a better supporting cast. Um, and the messy thing, now we know, was an absolute disaster because none of those front three defended. And it was extremely imbalanced, and they just did not have the midfield to to back up such defensive deficiencies of three attackers who do zero, zero, zero stuff defensively. Also, it was basically like Mbappe, Neymar... Messi was basically just a watered down version of MSN of Mbappe and two players past their peak who were not healthy and don't defend. So I think context matters. And I also think you can see the, the contrast with a better midfield and a better structure when he plays at the French national team. So I'll leave it there. I don't think it's fair to punish him for the lack of trophies just because he played for PSG. Uh, That's my answer. Both of you have a point, yeah. Both of you have a point. I, he's obviously... You can obviously, you cannot say he's not a winner just because of the lack of success in in PSG. But on the other hand, you know, he never led PSG to any major trophies uh, during during his era or his time as PSG's big, big star so both of you have a point I think it's reasonable I think it's reasonable and mainly in his last uh, few sentences when he's kind of talking about uh, Ranta when he's kind of talking about uh, the need from Real Madrid to kind of spoil Mbappe and and give him everything he wants I think that's a fair concern with all with all that's been transpiring for the last uh, for the last few years i think it's a it's a good point and a big uh, talking point and a big concern when addressing the mbappe and, and mbappe's potential signing for real madrid i don't disagree with that last part at all um vinicius being a more of a maridisa than mbappe, mbappe ever will be i don't think there's any uh sane person in the fan base who would disagree with that i think we're all in agreement and alignment with that Um, the but I just I have zero skepticism of Mbappe's big game ability because again this wasn't down to him not performing. If you go back to even when we knocked them out last year, Mbappe torched us. Um, the rest was pretty much out of his control. He's scoring buckets and buckets of goals every year. He lost the World Cup this past year, but he scored a hat trick in the final in one of the greatest performances of uh, a World Cup final ever. He's already won a World Cup before. There's no, there's no reason to be skeptical of his big game ability in Champions League nights for us if he, if he were to sign. Um, but again, as I've said many times, I don't think the tactical fit is an issue because we've seen him and Neymar coexist. And this is the other thing. Again, we don't know. This is very, very possible that he just doesn't arrive and he just pisses us off even further than he already has. But if he just if he does choose to come here, he knows he's coming here to play in the middle. He knows that Vinicius is a left winger. Like there's no he's not coming here without that knowledge. So you just assume that he's like leave leave the tactical fit part of it down to him. This is not like Griezmann and Messi getting in each other's way. This is completely different. I'm not worried about that part at all because they're again. And I'm also not worried about symmetry. This, sometimes I think we have an over-fascination of symmetry to have the right-winger traditional. 
Like it just football doesn't work that way anymore. It's much more fluid. We don't have like traditional wingers on both sides, like in the nineties where you have Figo on one side and, and, you know, McManaman on the other side. Like it's just, it's just, it's just different now. So I'm not worried about that aspect of it. I, I think I've been vocal about that in the past. I, I, I thought it was a great question though, Ranta, but my answer to that, like why Mbappe and Neymar didn't work. I think context really matters if you go year to year. Um, and I don't think it's fair to punish him for that, for not winning Champions League trophies. And also, just remember that, like, half the time, he had to go through the Real Madrid buzzsaw that was just unstoppable. <laughs> uh, so there's that as well. Anything else to add to this, Lucas? No, not really. I I agree with both of you, really. It's uh, both good points. I mean, Ranta has a very good point when... When he says the whole uh, Real Madrid should uh, make sure that they uh, accommodate Mbappe's uh, wishes, because I think that's a, a big concern and a fair concern of mine with this whole situation. But we'll see how that goes if uh, if Real Madrid end up completing the signing. Uh, 